Welcome to Swimming with Sharks, a deep dive into customer ops. I'm your host, Kevin Dean, CEO of Manobite, and I am thrilled to have you join us for an exciting journey through the dynamic world of customer operations. On this podcast, we're going to explore strategies, tools, and innovations that drive exceptional customer experiences. We're going to hear from some wonderful industry experts that will really help you think differently about the way that you work with your customers. So today we have a very special guest with us, Anne McDonald, and she is going to be talking to us about her experiences in customer success and how she's uh, been really successful over many, many years. So to get us started, Anne, it is great to have you on our show today. Thanks for joining. Thanks for having me, Kevin. I'm so excited to be here. Now, you and I have known each other for a little bit through our interactions at HubSpot, but a lot of people might not know you that well. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey. Yeah, absolutely. So um, my name is Anne. I am a uh, principal customer success manager at HubSpot, um, where I have been for the past four years, um, actually joining HubSpot initially, working with our solutions partners, so great partners like Manabyte and working with you, Kevin. Um, and I'm now uh, working with some of our uh, top customers at HubSpot within strategic accounts. Um, but I actually come from a completely different background. I uh, worked in global education for about 14 years before I joined HubSpot. Um, where I worked, uh, you know, if everything from enrollment services uh, to supporting our students on site in our various global programs. And I joined HubSpot after having my own experience working with the software in one of the companies that I had worked at and thought, what a transformative way to approach the work that we're doing. I would love to be a part of that in some capacity. So I'm really pleased to be a part of that journey for, for customers today. That is super awesome. And I did not know that you were in the education space. So that's super cool. Yeah, absolutely. So let me ask you this. Um, how, did, had, how did your view coming from, custom, from education into customer success, how did that really shape the way that you look at it? Because that gives you a completely different lens. Absolutely. I, first and foremost, I'd say I think that there's a ton of overlap. So when I was you know, initially looking at opportunities at HubSpot, I was trying to make sense of, you know, I have this experience managing advising teams, you know, managing um, our program managers of different accounts. How am I going to translate that into a company like HubSpot? But what I've come to understand is there's just a tremendous amount of overlap in terms of what I was trying to achieve in that role and what I'm trying to achieve today. Um, both roles were completely focused on the success and outcomes of our respective customers. So whether that was a student, whether that was a faculty leading a program, or whether that is a CMO um, you know, or chief revenue officer of a major company, um, everyone's looking for results and everyone's looking for a return on their investment. Um, and then secondary to that, I would say understanding that folks learn differently um, and making sure that you're paying attention to that and modifying your approach uh, to meet the needs of the different individuals that you're working with and paying attention to how some of those shifts and changes can occur relative to the way in which people receive information and you know how they're, they're making sense of what you're sharing with them. I love that thought about really thinking about how people receive information and really looking at it from the lens that everybody receives it differently and using that knowledge to be able to help customers succeed. I think that that is a key point. Thanks for sharing that with us. Absolutely. So as you look out into the world of customer success, uh, what are some of the biggest challenges that you see um, happening in the space today? Yeah, that's a, a great question, um, and one that I would say I am thinking about probably all the time. Uh, you know, and, and the same way that our customers thinking are thinking about it. But you know, first and foremost, I'd call out: we're not in the same place that we were four or five years ago, right? You know, we're we're facing, and by we I mean the global economy. Um, mm -hmm. Businesses are facing headwinds and challenges. Uh, you know, folks need to make uh, proof of every the value that they're deriving from every single investment that they have um 
they are needing to do more with less um, and they're needing to make sure that they're achieving that perhaps more quickly than they ever were before while facing you know, longer sales cycles, more objections. Um, and so it's really my job to make sure that I'm, I'm helping create those pathways um, and, and transform maybe the pathways in which folks had been previously using the platform uh, so that they're able to see that value going forward uh, in, in new and different ways. Um, but it is, you know, it is challenging. It means that you really have to approach the role differently. Yeah, that's, that, those are some real big challenges that everybody, regardless of the industry, regardless of the space that you're in, we do see those challenges coming up to the top um, all the time. Yeah. So how, tell me this, from your perspective, how do you handle these high customer expectations with managing the limited resources that every company has on their end? Right. Yeah, that's a great question, Kevin. Um, you know, I, I, I try to approach these scenarios by thinking first and foremost, how would, how would I feel? I am a customer every day, right? So how do I feel when I am in my customer's shoes? How, what sort of comparable scenarios do I find myself in and what are the moments that I've been frustrated by and what are the moments that I have been uh, really pleasantly surprised by in terms of, of the services that I'm receiving. Um, and I think communication rem remains king, uh, you know, making sure that you are appropriately setting expectations on what you're able to deliver upon, um, delivering upon the deliverables that, that, that you can meet. Um, and so what that means is when someone's coming to me with a problem, I may not be able to solve the problem with 48 hour, within 48 hours, but I can definitely check back in with you at 48 hours and let you know exactly where we are and make sure that I'm committing to that timeline so that you know where your issue or your challenge or your need falls um, in terms of that, that ongoing priority for you. And then in addition to that, I'd say it's making sure that I am helping my customers understand that I also understand their priorities. And I need to know what those priorities are, right? I need to have been working with them in such a way that I know what their goals are, I know what their KPIs are, and I'm able to communicate back to them that what is serious to them is serious to me. And I'm gonna use the, the luckily, the number of internal levers and resources that I do have to be able to facilitate a solution through leaning into a number of different folks to deliver upon that. You know, what I love about what you said is how communication really is valuable. And that goes a long way. Um, maybe you can share with me, how do you communicate bad news? Or how do you communicate that, you know, we maybe can't do exactly what you want us to do, or there may be an additional cost. How do you communicate that in a way that uh, really sinks in with the customer yeah yeah that's that is a great question and you know i think that is an area where throughout the lifetime of my career i will never stop trying to improve upon that or finding ways in which i you know think to myself the next day gosh i could have done that differently but my approach has always been lead with empathy you know and understand um what you're coming to the table with um and and you know, treat the situation with the empathy that it requires. Um, this was as much the case when delivering bad news to students as it is now working, you know, with folks in, in different situations and in different companies. Be straightforward. You know, I think it's also important to be upfront and honest and clear in terms of the outcome that you're communicating um, and try to come with alternative solutions. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're able to perhaps find a different pathway. Maybe it's not the original pathway that they've been envisioning. Maybe it's not the exact solution that, you know, they were I, I, ideally looking for. Um, but I think being able to offer something in that partnership to say, hey, we're not going to be able to meet you right here, but we can meet you over here. And I think we can still get there together. Uh, I think can be really reassuring to the customer in terms of the seriousness with which you're taking their challenges. I love that, right? Because it, it really is a partnership and, you know, everybody's got to, Give, a, give and take a little bit. And just the way that you communicate that is really going to go a long way. You know, and that I bleed orange. HubSpot <laughs> is an awesome platform. We absolutely love it. Uh, but I think about 
technology um, from a customer success perspective, um, can you help me understand and help our audience understand um, how technology really is transforming the way that um, you deliver upon customer success? That's a great question, Kevin. Um, it is so interesting to watch the way in which technology is transforming the information that we have access to, the tools that we have access to, even week over week. I have resources this week that I didn't have two weeks ago that are making a major difference in terms of the, the way that I work with my customers. Um, so when I first started in this role, you know, I had access to information that was, we have our own, you know, home, homegrown bespoke system that, that we use internally for our customer success managers. And a lot of the information that was in that is very similar to information that you would find in any CRM, right? It's, it's general information in terms of the account. And it's up to me to figure out the investigative pathway to distill that down into actions that I need to be taking with my customers, who I'm prioritizing, why, what I want our conversations to look like. And that required a lot of investigative work through different tools, you know, through a deep dive into the portal directly with the customer to get a better understanding of what they were using and what they weren't using, um, you know, pulling three or four different reports to try to understand changes. Um, look, I, you know, I love solving mysteries as much as the next person. I put on my Jessica Fletcher hat and approach it, you know, with full on murder, she wrote um, enthusiasm. But now uh, we're able to avail of, you know, technology and AI that allows us to much better and more easily see exactly the tools that our customers are using without even having to step into their portal. We're able to see changes week over week in terms of usage at a very granular level um, and able to take those changes and distill that down at a company wide level into understanding how that can be indicative of risk and make decisions based off of that. And so that just means we're spending much less time doing guesswork, you know, hoping that our analysis is correct, and instead able to lead with that information straight away to have more meaningful conversations with our customers. Um, and I only expect that that's going to continue to improve. Um, and it's, you know, very much something that we're baking into our own customer success workspace that we've rolled out within, uh, within Service Hub as well. You know, you mentioned AI. And um, probably maybe a month ago, uh, Manobite, we published a blog about 22 AI tools inside of HubSpot that people need to know about. Uh, and we know that Darmesh is always thinking ahead about how to incorporate AI in everything that, I mean, I think that's kind of one of his things right now. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's not talk about HubSpot, but um, how are you seeing Gen AI impacting everyday workflow for customer success. Yeah. You know, I'll I'll be my honest and put my hand up. I am one of the, the people who it was a little like, oh, I don't know where all of this is going. This is you know, big changes. And I, I'm reaching that point in my life where, you know, I'm very comfortable with what I know about technology and, and I don't know if I can keep up in the same ways anymore. Um, but what I'm already seeing and coming to understand is the way in which AI will enhance how we can approach our roles and more easily access information um, is going to free up mental space uh, for us to be able to take the skills and expertise that we've developed and apply that in new ways. And so probably very similarly to the conversations that you know folks in marketing roles for example have been having folks in, in other roles where we've seen generative AI you know be able to take over tasks that maybe previously we had been doing it's about thinking about how we can leverage it as a tool in our toolkit rather than something to be afraid of um, and therefore really leaning into it and saying this is great I'm gonna make you work for me generative AI and you know I'm, I'm gonna really put you to the test and put you to work here so that I can take advantage of that to, um, you know, to maximize the way in which I can work with my customers faster and more effectively. That's awesome. Thanks for being vulnerable and sharing your honest views about it, because I think that there are more people who feel like you do 
then there are people who feel like Darmesh and they're just all in it, super excited, right? Because uh, there's just so many questions and so many, it's just so new. It, it's coming so fast. So thanks for sharing that. That's, that is really uh, powerful. Yeah, happy to. So in your opinion, um, when you look at the landscape for customer success, um, what do you think is missing? What do you think um, companies need to be thinking about as they think about how they can better deliver on customer success? It's a really interesting question, Kevin. Um, you know, I think there's probably a lot missing, right? Like there's a lot of opportunity. Um, I think in general, we're, we're seeing expansion in terms of the, the software and tools that support customer success managers and, and all of that happening in line with expanded usage of AI means I think we'll, we'll only start to see a, a far more um, technology available to us. Something that just came up in conversation today uh, within my own team um, in terms of the tools that we have access to is, as you are probably aware, Bleeding Orange, HubSpot's got a lot of product updates on a monthly basis, right? You know, it's a good problem to have. There's so many different uh, new updates that roll out, um, new elements to the software that we want to make sure everyone knows about. Not every update is going to be relevant to every single individual. It would be great to be able to take usage within a customer portal and be able to pull out maybe what are five or six product updates from this month that are really going to make a difference based on usage trends. Um, so, you know, that's a HubSpot specific issue, but I think across the board, um, you know, other software companies are updating on a regular basis as well. Keeping folks up to date on what those updates are and making sure that they're leveraging those new tools is key. How can we lean into what we know about how they're using the platform just based on what information we have and AI um, to better surface um, some of those opportunities? Um, and some of that, I think, is already happening, happening even in terms of existing tools, that ability to make recommendations about tools that someone's not using. So I think that's that's not a long ways off. Um, knowing Dharmesh, it's probably something he's already thinking about. So, uh, yeah. But small things like that, I think, can make a big difference uh, just in terms of when you have a large book of business, making meaningful recommendations around product updates at scale is very hard to do in an individualized way. Um, so that is something that can take some of that burden off of a CSM, but still make sure that that information is being shared out. Uh, oh, I love that. I love that. That's, that's helpful. So if you had one final piece of advice for people, leaders who want to be successful with customer success, what advice would you give? We think about that for a bit. Um, that is a really interesting question. Um, you know, I think, I think just continuing to listen to your teams and just as CSMs are having to be more and more nimble to respond to the ways in which customers' needs are changing and therefore equip ourselves with the new tools to be able to best serve our customers, that means that our leaders have to be equally moving at that speed. Um, so I think any leader within a customer success space is going to be watching that landscape um, and really trying to think three steps ahead in terms of how can I make sure that our teams are coming into the conversation with the tools that they need rather than having to play catch up for the ways in which the industry is changing uh, so that we can maintain really, really solid relationships and trust from our customers. That is insightful. I think you're 100% correct, but it's a big task for leaders. It's a big task, yes, yeah. It, it's a big task, especially right now. I think, wow, there's so much to keep up with, right? Um, you know, it, there's a lot, there's a lot to keep up with, but you're, you're, you're right. I think trying to stay up, stay, stay up to speed now is gonna be much better than trying to play catch up later. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you're not going to get it right 100% of the time. But I think if we're constantly bubbling up those feedback loops, uh, it'll go a long way. Yeah. Oh, man, this is so fun. and so great talking to you. I I've got another question for you before we say goodbye to everybody. Uh, when you're not crushing it in the customer success world, what fun things do you like to do? 
So I love to travel. That is what got me into the global education space in the first place. And I am constantly trying to plan new trips for myself or plan trips for others. I am the go-to in my group of friends for finding good deals on airfare, good deals on hotels, even putting together itineraries. So um, I'm spending a week of rest in Northwest Ireland. Um, so looking forward to that, um, but constantly trying to find uh, you know, new opportunities to kind of get out into the world. Oh man. So uh, give me one, I know you're going, you said you're going to Ireland, but give me one go-to spot that you say, if you can only go to one spot, this is where you got to go. Gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's so hard, Kevin. I'm so not a, a favorites person, but I feel like when I've answered that question for folks in the past, one of my favorite places that I've been to that completely lived up to my expectations um, was Colombia and, and specifically Cartagena. Oh. Yeah. But I am a big fan of Gabriel Garcia Marquez and I had been kind of saving a trip to Colombia for, for a birthday. Um, and I thought, you know, I built up my expectations so high. There's no way it's going to live up to them. It is absolutely beautiful. Really loved my time there and have gone back a second time since. So, uh, so yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll say that a hundred percent. I would say Cartagena. Oh, wow. I wouldn't have thought about that. I think that's going to go on my bucket list now. Okay. Well, let me know how it goes. I look forward to hearing about it. I will for sure. Thank you so very much for joining us on this episode of Swimming with Sharks. And we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks a bunch. Yeah.